that's uh, that's really special. It's a bloody good book too. Very uh, clever idea. You'd like all these great ideas of his. Everybody afterwards thinks that's so simple, so obvious. Well, wow, that's the mark of a really great idea. And uh, no one could work out what the hell these coral reefs were doing. There in the middle of the ocean was a, re a reef just a, made of coral. What? How did that happen? And it was only Darwin who um, people had realised from volcanoes something might build up. But of course, they also subsided. And it was his, entirely his idea. And as it goes down slowly, the coral builds up. And to begin with, nobody really believed it. But now that's, that's it. That was the start. That was his first great um, idea. It just, if that was all he had done, he would still be special. Right. Upstairs. Oh, up there. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah, they had enough. Mm. Really? Nowhere else in the world is doing this. Just Holland. Extraordinary. And putting in millions into it. Oh. Nothing in America, nothing in England. Well, they think BBC say, well, we did um, the Voyage of the Beagle, this famous series. His wife, you see, Emma, knelt down at the end of his bed every night before she got in, prayed for his soul and that he would change his wicked ideas. Um, difficult because he adored her and she was his nurse and she did everything that freed him to think. Uh, so no wonder he did his first sketch. I think it was 1847, wasn't it? And then uh, no wonder it was a surprise when he got Wallace's letter. But I think partly the horror of his own ideas, like confessing to a murder, as he said, uh, was really, it was bound into the home. His Emma was everything to him that a nurse would be to a sick man and, and much more. And I think it's very touching that he took her to the door of the church, escorted her there, then went off looking in the hedgerows, and then was back outside the door to escort her home again. Um, God, what a lovely man he was. <laughs> I don't think he told her what the theory was. Okay. I mean, and in his famous list that every man likes, um, comparing, yes, to marry and not to marry, you know that one, yeah. Uh, loss of time, if you marry. Uh, and it's, as you read it, the list, it looks as if marriage is the most terrible, terrible thing. And then on the opposite column, there is, imagine, nice, soft wife on the sofa. And then underneath is, marry, marry, marry. <laughs> <laughs> Quite right. <laughs> it's astonishing that nobody really rated Darwin, even when I was alive. Um, now you go, and there's a car park. I'm afraid there's a shop, big gift shop and very little in the rooms because they're just too valuable now. Okay. But at least the, the house is there and the garden is still there. I, I never heard of it, that's fantastic. Oh, that's uh, I like it. Mm. That sounds risky. Well, when we've had the wine, we'll have a little. You <laughs> <laughs> um, don't need more than four friends. Nobody can really be Great friends with more than should be three other males, but make it four in case one dies. He kept these friends for what, twenty years, twenty five years? So well to begin with, before they got jealous of him, um, Lyle. And then Lyle realised that he Lyle was no longer the star. The star was Darwin. Mm -hmm. A bit like me and Ian McEwen, really. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I haven't seen you. Except, except I never got jealous. And, <laughs> and Huxley, wonderful, you know, Huxley cat. Huxley would talk and talk and Darwin would talk and, and then Hooker, this lovely botanist. They would, they would come, some at any time, 
to down Hearts. Serious, yes. Um, no jokes, but but wonderful, modest, obsessed, of course, with naturalists. You need to talk about that forever. Um, and uh, and how strange. I mean, his whole focus, his very first paper, was on worms, annually of worms, and then right at the end of his career, wonderful book. And on earthworms. I mean, <laughs> very difficult not to love such a man. And of course that was one reason why he gradually, even in his lifetime, uh, conquered everybody and was buried in Westminster Abbey. If he'd had one mistress, there was one scandalous story about him later, that would have been it. Nobody would have taken his theories. Um, seriously. Thank you.